Welcome back, book fiends, to Wicked Good Books, a channel dedicated to books and things book adjacent. My name is Nick, and I'm the host of this channel. Today's video is going to be souls like book suggestions or souls like book recommendations. Uh, what is souls like, you might be asking? For those familiar with the From Software video games Dark Souls, uh, the term souls like stems from video games or books or material that is reminiscent or inspired by or gives off the same vibes as the video game series Dark Souls. I'm referring to, of course, Demon Souls, Dark Souls 1, 2, and 3, uh, Demon Souls the remake on PS5, Bloodborne, and Sekiro. These three titles, uh, Dark Souls, Bloodborne, and Sekiro, uh, are widely beloved for various reasons, uh, whether you love a hard, difficult game, uh, or like to get really frustrated and throw your controller and scream at the TV, or feel that sense of accomplishment when you finally beat a level, or a section, or a boss, or a very minor mob in a dungeon. Uh, that kills you with one shot and you lose all your souls. Uh, but for those of us who've traveled the dark worlds from, from software's titles uh, and are hungry or seeking more stories like what you find in a Dark Souls or Souls-like video game, I kind of want to put together a video primarily because a few months ago, I myself, after beating Dark Souls 3, uh, Bloodborne and Sekiro and having not gotten my hands on a PS5 yet, I uh, haven't been able to play the remake of Demon's Souls. And so I was really hungry for more content that was reminiscent of these types of stories and these types of worlds. Uh, and I went online and I was you know, you know, doing basic Google search, kind of scouring Reddit um, for some decent suggestions. And I really couldn't find any that I hadn't either thought of myself already or that I hadn't already read or that were really of any interest to me. Obvious choices like uh, Mervyn Peake's uh, Titus Groan came up for Dark Souls S books because of its gothic uh, architecture and, and ambiance and atmosphere and brooding gray area, kind of depressing characters, uh, gloomy setting um, in a castle. Uh, that sort of has that Dark Souls vibes. And if you haven't read any of the Titus Grown series, I uh, highly recommend Mervyn Peak Titus Grown book for any of those who are looking for that kind of content. That one I'd never heard of, and I've actually already read it in college. Um, but it was kind of cool to see that that was that popped up on one of those lists. Looks like Poppy War uh, and Sword of Kaigan kind of popped up for kind of similar to Sekiro. It didn't quite fit the criteria I was looking for either of those searches though. I do enjoy those books and those worlds, but I wanted something new and fresh and, uh, and something that was either directly inspired by these games uh, or was very Souls-like. But the world and the settings and the characters, the creatures, the world design, these things I just crave and you can find them in certain books. Um, kind of give you the same vibe or the same feeling and that's kind of what I'm getting at with these souls like book recommendations mostly to help out anybody like me that was looking for some um, I might like I said I myself couldn't find that many of them scouring the internet I spent way too much time on reddit trying to find uh, suggestions that I felt were either unique or, or kind of fit the criteria I was looking for um, but hopefully again these are just my opinions you may not agree with the suggestions I'm about to give uh, but these are books that I enjoy or that I'm currently enjoying that are giving me those souls like vibes so let's get right into it. Dark Souls takes place in a fictional kingdom of Lordran, where players assume the role of a cursed undead character who begins a pilgrimage to discover the fate of their kind amongst the ruin and rubble of a crumbling kingdom in a dying world. Very medieval, uh, very, very high fantasy-esque um, with little hints of Victorian era things sprinkled in there, um, but it's high fantasy. Uh, I would even call it grimdark. It's very dying world fantasy, but also very unique takes on knights and dragons and kings and kingdoms. Again, it's a dying world. So this is a once beautiful kingdom. And in the game, in the story, you're coming in at the end uh, after the world has sort of already ended. So you're seeing sort of the destroyed um, and desolate, once beautiful landscape of this world. Then there's Bloodborne, uh, a personal favorite of mine. Uh, Bloodborne follows the player's character, a hunter, through the decrepit, gothic, Victorian-era-inspired city of Yarnum, whose inhabitants are afflicted with a bloodborne disease. Attempting to find the source of the plague, the player's character unravels the city's mysteries while fighting beasts and cosmic beings. Bloodborne was inspired by the literary works of authors like H.P. Lovecraft and Bram Stoker, as well as the architectural design of real-world locations in places such as Romania and the Czech Republic. Bloodborne was sort of like my first entry into the Souls-like games. I had bought in Dark Souls 3 and Bloodborne at the same time, but I was more inspired by that Victorian-era werewolf-zombie gaslight district setting. 
and uh, it did not disappoint. I fell in love with it. I bought all the DLCs for it, and now it has become one of my favorite games of all time. I also am a big fan of cosmic horror. There's a lot of that in Bloodborne. It's, to me, just it, it pulled me in. It's a, it's a dark uh, fantasy horror setting with a really creepy and compelling cosmic horror mystery at its center. Lastly, and more most recently, is the game Sekiro, which I recently beat. It was the hardest one of the three for me to play. This one is more Japanese-inspired, but I'll say the game follows a shinobi known as Wolf as he attempts to take revenge on a samurai clan who attacked and kidnapped his lord. Gameplay focuses on this one more on stealth and exploration and combat, with a particular emphasis on boss battles uh, and uh, parrying. The game takes place in a fictionalized Japan set during the Sengoku period and makes strong references to Buddhist mythology and philosophy. Last on that list is Elden Ring, which is supposed to be kind of Norse-inspired. Uh, it's supposed to be co-written by George R.R. Martin and Miyazaki from, from Software. We haven't heard much about it other than that. The trailer was very compelling. I'm not going to give any suggestions yet for Elden Ring because it has not enough information for me to give. Once the game comes out though, and if people seem to enjoy this video, I might do a second sequel video talking about book recommendations and the same Souls-like Elden Ring vein. Each of these games in these worlds are so unique. Now they're in kind of like a shared universe. It doesn't really mention if they are the same or not, but however, however there are very subtle Easter eggs that kind of connect all three stories, extremely subtle. Um, for the keen eye or the person who's played for the 500th time. Dark Souls is full of this like grim, dark, dreary, dying world setting. You play this undead character trying to make his or her way through this collapsing world and sort of decide whether or not you want to take part in rekindling it or letting it die. And that's a concept that in itself is super interesting to me, but it's the world design, the characters, the bosses, and the lore that you find out through environmental storytelling, which I feel like crosses over into books in its own way. And I do love in all my fiction when the writer relies heavily on the environment and the setting to kind of tell the story of this world rather than giving us these big exposition dumps. It's a very hard thing to pull off in fiction. Um, however, I do think these books I'm about to mention do a pretty well, uh, but it's the storytelling, the, the lore that you read. There's a lot of reading in the game, uh, in in-game texts, books, items, item descriptions, and that's kind of how you figure out the lore of the world. And I love those kind of features in a book. First on this list is Demon Souls and Dark Souls. One of the closest recommendations I've come across so far is going to be Mal's and Book of the Fallen by Steven Erickson and Black Dog. Uh, by K.B. Johansson, uh, which is part of a longer series, but I've only read Black Dog, so let me speak to that one. But I know from what I've read so far, it, it is just the closest thing I've come across in high fantasy, uh, grim dark, dark fantasy, that just feels Souls-like. Now, if you're unfamiliar with these worlds or these authors, highly recommend them if you do enjoy fantasy. Um, Steven Erickson's work, he's a phenomenal writer. His writing is close to Shakespearean to me. The world that he has created is so immersive. It's one of those books that gets better upon reread and I can only imagine what it's like to finish the whole series only to go back and restart it. I feel like you get so much more out of it the second time. But from what I've read so far, the world is super dark. The characters in this world are stooped in its lore and its own mythology. They are morally gray and layered. Um, a lot of them aren't even human. Some of them are god or godlike or close to immortal. Um, which I feel like really kind of just reeks of uh, Souls-like and Dark Souls uh, energy. But the world itself is in like this brink of chaos and turmoil and this constant shifting of power and this imbalance of power that seems to be happening. And we kind of come in at the midnight hour in the story, at least how I understand it. Um, but you have these like absolutely psychedelic uh, villains and magic system that feels like inspired by classic fantasy um, and very reminiscent of things you'd see in like Dungeons and Dragons. But Erickson has a way of making it wholly his own. Stephen Erickson relies heavily on two things, in my personal opinion, and that is his characters and his ability to uh, tell a story through the environment or the environmental storytelling aspect of Malazan. The world itself sort of tells its own story, whether it be like a destroyed ruin or a corrupted city um, or, or just news about the world that you're getting through different characters. Um, or e even like landmarks that you're coming across that the characters describe what they are. You're learning about the history and the lore of this world through its setting, through its environment. And to me, that is just very much a Souls-like feature. Um, it's very interesting to me. It's half the reason why I'm still invested in the book series. And then, of course, there's the characters who talk in almost this drawl Shakespearean way that reminds me so much of the different NPCs, the different characters you meet throughout the Dark Souls world that talk in low voices and hush whispers. It just really reminds me of the characters I've met so far. And I think the audiobook is definitely helping uh, in that regard because there's so many characters in Malazan. And the other on that list was Black Dog by K.B. Johansson. 
Uh, this is a part of a larger series, like I said, but the first book can be kind of read on its own. That one, just the way the world is built and the way that gods interact with the individuals, with the main character especially. You have this like goddess that's trapped in a little girl's body and she's being kind of escorted across the countryside. Um, being prayed to along the way, almost like a, a pilgrimage of sorts. And her bodyguards, the black dog, who's like this demonic being trapped in this mercenary's body. And he can kind of shape shift and transform into like a wolf, which just gives me super Arturis vibes from uh, Dark Souls. And there's just something gritty and dark about this world that the black, the black dog takes place in, as well as the way the characters interact with each other. They, they have this sense of, th they have their own thing going on and we're just witnesses to it. Um, which is sort of how every book works, but there's something about K.V. Johansson's writing in Black Dog that just reminds me so much of the Dark Souls and Souls Light universe. Um, but I highly recommend that one. Not enough people talk about that. Moving on to the next one is Bloodborne, which is of the three my favorite in the series and of the, of the From Software games. I have two suggestions for this one as well, and that's going to be uh, D.M. Cornish's Monster Blood Tattoo Trilogy. Uh, this is a young adult series that not enough people, I feel like, talk about. It's really wonderful. It's by this Australian author who's also an artist, and he draws a lot of his maps and characters and, and, and sketchbook art in the world, kind of like you'd see in a Stormlight book. Um, and I really, really appreciate when an author adds those extra elements to their story. It really helps to immerse you in their world that they're creating. But there's something about that world specifically, the monsters, the, the werewolf, lycanthrope-esque creatures, and these monster hunters like Bloodborne, that sort of modify their bodies, their organs, and drink certain uh, uh, potions and elixirs to give them stronger senses and have stronger uh, features, but like fit, change their physicality to better hunt the monsters. To me, that just screams Bloodborne. That's pretty much exactly what happens in Bloodborne. But that one takes place in this world where this kid, this foundling, basically an orphan, uh, joins the Lamplighters, and they're pretty much the young men and women of this uh, large, large continent, of this large cityscape that travel the roads at night and light the lamps so that the soldiers and so the merchants and citizens can travel the roads safely and not be attacked by monsters. These lamplighters are generally accompanied by these monster hunters who modify their bodies to help keep the caravan safe as well as the lamplighters. And it's just very gaslight, Victorian error inspired, but with a little bit of gothic horror mixed in there. The first book is called Foundling and the second book is Lamplighter. Um, I really enjoy these. I have not read the third one yet i believe the third one's called factotum um i really want to read it i just want to get it in the same style as these books and i don't think you can get it in the u.s so kind of a bummer now moving on to a, um, another bloodborne suggestion which is the helm of midnight uh, by marina lovesetter and this world to me just reeks of bloodborne vibes uh there's something about it that reminds me so much of how i felt playing that game whether it be the characters you've got these blunderbuss rifles and sabers but also a really interesting enchantment system uh, the magic is really unique and the, the deities the gods is extremely unique unlike anything i've read recently let's talk about what it's about so you have this character who is a uh regulator of sorts um almost like a police force slash detective. She's part of a squad of regulators who kind of uh, police the streets of this city. These, these regulators are after this mass murderer um, who's been dead for generations, but apparently his mask was stolen um, from this exhibit that they were guarding. And uh, it's up to these regulators to figure out who's committing these new crimes wearing the mask. And there's something about that that is just very Bloodborne-esque to me, whether it be like the color schemes or just the, the, the dialogue and the general feel of the world or just the idea of like this mystery surrounding this cosmic threat um, or this godlike or, or this um, outer-worldly threat. This magic system, no one can inherently do magic, but they have these items, whether they be necklaces, bracers, weapons, or masks that are imbued with magical powers and properties given to them by their gods. Um, the masks being the main component of this story as you can contain a dying person's memories in these masks and then relive those memories and, and almost like download them into your psyche by wearing them, which in itself is a super cool concept, but the world, the world which shines to me, it reminds me so much of Yarnum. It reminds me so much of being a hunter with a, a, a blunderbuss pistol in one hand and my scythe in the other, just wandering the cobblestone streets of this gaslight Victorian-esque era story, extremely gothic, very Lovecraftian, uh, fighting these lycanthrope creatures uh, in the middle of the night. And that's sort of at the heart what it feels like to me to read this book. I actually was playing the, the soundtrack to the game while I was reading it because it just fits so well, which is not something I commonly am able to do. I usually, that's, I'm, I'm usually way off. But as far as Souls-like suggestions go, 
uh, Monster Blood Tattoo by DM Cornish and Helm of Midnight by Marina Lozletter. Those two, I feel like, just fit the criteria so well for a Bloodborne-esque story. Lastly, we have Sekiro, which is the most recent entry in the From Software catalog. It is the one that takes place in a fictionalized Japan. Uh, there was a lot of choices on this one. I, I read a lot of books that remind me of Sekiro because this one is it takes place in Japan, so it has that going for it, where the other two take place in fictional worlds. But... There's something special about this recommendation because this is an older trilogy that might be hard to find. You can probably get it pretty cheap on Kindle, but it also links together another thing I'm very passionate about, which is Magic the Gathering. I've been playing Magic the Gathering since I was probably eight years old, and I used to love getting the card decks and the books that went with them, the reading material, which they don't really do anymore, which they did. We have Outlaw, Heretics, and Guardians of Kamigawa. These three books by Scott Mago uh, are three of my favorites. Um, I do love Magic the Gathering, but you do not need to be a player or be familiar with the game, the card game, to read these books. They really do read on, they, they do stand on their own. Set in a Japanese influence inspired story, stooped in their culture and spirituality and mythology. The books themselves deal with uh, kamis, which are basically magical entities. Essentially, everything has a kami. So, a book, there could be a, a kami of a book or a Kami of a pen. They're just these embodiments, these spirits of these objects and these things, and both in life and in nature, both inanimate and animate objects. Um, and they sort of unleash this war upon the land. Um, and the humans and other creatures, humanoid creatures that reside here in Kamigawa, don't understand why the Kami have now turned on them. And as they once lived in peace with these spiritual beings, they are now ravaging their landscape and kind of overtaking their world. And you had this like, little mystery in the middle of this hall as these different characters from different parts of the continent band together to solve the mystery and figure out what is stirring the nest, so to speak, for these uh, kami spirit creatures. And uh, to me, that just screams Sekiro. Uh, it reminded me so much of it. I read this a long time ago. These are pretty old. I'm not sure their exact um, copyright dates are. 2005, I want to say. So this is probably 2003, actually. Let's see. 2004. I was close. Because of the card game, there's tons of art, official art for these books, for the creatures and characters in the places. So it's one of those book series that you can read, and if you don't understand something or you want a better visual of something, you can quite literally Google or pull up one of the cards um, from that set and look at this beautiful art by various artists that work for Wizards of the Coast to bring this world to life. So after thinking really hard on it, those Magic the Gathering books, the Kamigawa trilogy um, by Scott Mago, uh, or the closest thing I could find or think of that really gave me the same uh, feeling and vibes that Sakito gave me while playing it. Now, if you've made it this far into the video, uh, I firstly want to say thank you uh, for bearing with me. Uh, I appreciate the support. Uh, if you haven't already, feel free to like and subscribe the video. Secondly, if you're noticing a slight setup change here, uh, long story short, I lost the original footage um, that I had shot for the Souls Like Recommendations video. But essentially, in conclusion, uh, these are just some of my suggestions for those three main titles from the creator Hidetaka Miyazaki's From Software Company. Um, I would love to do a part two to this video. And if you know of any Souls-like recommendations that you can think of or books that you think kind of give off that same vibe, please share them down below. I would love to just talk about this topic more with the community and uh, possibly put together a part two to this video, depending on how much you guys enjoyed it. So that's going to be it for this one, guys. As always, thank you so much for the support. Uh, I can't tell you how much it means to me that so many of you have joined the Wicked Good Book community. And uh, we'll see you in the next one. Stay wicked. Stay wicked.